What is happening guys? Welcome back to the channel and to another video on the Golf. So, in the last episode you saw that we made and fitted some repair panels to the inner scuttle rain tray area. Um, they were, it was pretty rotten, um, but we got those back in, looking good, um, really pleased with the way they've turned out. A little bit of dressing still to do, but they're good enough for, for now so we can move on to another area. But this episode is going to be about this area. So if you've seen the video of where it came back from the blasters, this uh, was a little worse than we first thought. Um, now, it isn't going to be the easiest of things to repair, but it should be doable. Um, initial thoughts of what I'm thinking are, I've thrown the uh, new sill on and I've drawn these pen lines here as to where the sill is going to go. This line here is, I've done this with a square. Um, to keep this straight edge so we can cut this off so what I'm thinking is we'll try and cut this piece out um, and make this piece as one bringing it further extending it further down than we need to um, because this line is where this sill where this sill panel comes in so we'll make this piece so that it goes further down into here we can then trim back whichever point that we'd like to trim back but to do that, we're going to have to cut this out. I'm going to cut all of this area out of this sill as well and lose this bottom corner because there's a bit of repairing to do on here. And then we need to try and get as much of this rotten metal out of here as we can because there's a little patch on the inside that needs doing as well. So we've got that little patch in there that we're going to have to somehow try and fix as well. Um, and obviously I've not uh, put the scuttle on because we've got all these bits to fix as well and this all sort of ties in. I didn't want to go putting the scuttle on when we've got to repair all this. So that's the game plan, I think. Um, I'm going to just get the grinder out, uh, spot weld drill, get myself set up and just start removing a few bits, I think. Um, yeah, it's going to be fun, this is. Let's just jump into it, try and get some stuff removed. So guys, that's that section removed uh, from the car. I've removed the all this sill corner as well. So I've just cut this, trying to cut this bit of rot out in this corner here. The rest of it seems pretty solid. There's a little bit of surface on it, but nothing that a little um, white with curust won't uh, won't sort, and we'll grind that back. Um, I'm going to cut all this area out as well because this piece needs a patch in it. But to be able to do that, we're going to have to remove this section, which needs replacing and fixing anyway. Um, so I'm going to cut this piece out to give us a bit of better access for in here. So we've cut all of this bit away. Uh, we've also cut this piece away that was rotten, and then we've cut a load of this bit away because that was all rotten as well. Um, so we've got to now start trying to remake all of this corner because it's all back to sort of solid metal. So we need to cut a plate for in this little hole here. Um, we then need to cut this piece that goes back in here. But the first part I want to start with is this piece that goes on here, because this is sort of a bit complex and it's where I want to start, because I'm doing it. So um, we've got to remember we need to add the thickness of the blade onto places and this also needs to curl up to match the other side. So this is obviously the other side. This is off that side, turn it upside down. That piece goes there and it's got an, a slight upturn that then welds onto this piece that's on here. 
So we've got this as sort of a reference, but we're gonna go and lay this on a piece of steel, cut a piece out, and we'll start marking it to fit that side. So pieces on this bit of steel, this bit of scrap. We want to be cutting um, it a bit bigger than this piece, obviously, to take into account the thickness of the grinding blade. So I'm gonna use a Sharpie for this one. And then we'll cut to the outside of the line. And that should give us about the right size piece. And then we can always trim back from there. Add a bit on, cut that out. See how we're getting on. So there's this front piece that goes just there. Like that. And then there's this back piece that hooks around that, touches up to there. We've got some nice gaps going on to get some pretty good welds. We've got to trim a bit in, then we'll drill that hole in that piece for the wing when it's all, the wing's on and we're, we're all back together sort of thing. Now, should have made this in one. Yes, I should have made it in one, but I didn't. I'd cut this side of there, trying to save the mounting, but the rust that was in it, there was no point in trying to make a little bit around it. We might as well have just made the whole piece again. So that's that bit. What we're gonna deal with now is cutting a piece to go in here. Which I think shouldn't be too, 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 too difficult. So, what I'm gonna do, get a bit of card, we'll do the old rubbish trick again, cut a bit out of card, make sure we're happy with that, and then we'll move it into steel and get it fitted. So here's the hole that we've done, um, all cut out, all sort of dressed up nicely, ready to, uh, ready to weld the new part in, which is here, which I've now made, uh, using the magnet to hold it in place because it's so small and we can't get behind it. But that sits in somewhere there, um, and we'll weld it all the way round, dress this again, dress this bit, but then this bit isn't really going to be seen and I'll have seam sealer on it anyway. So um, we won't really worry about grinding that back and getting in. I'd just rather it be strong than than look nice, if you like, where in here where it isn't definitely isn't ever going to be seen. And there is that patch in. Like I said, I've not gone mad with dressing it. This bit is going to be inside here out of the way. Um, so and this bit sort of matches. There's a bit of a weldy blob from the factory going on around here as well. Um, so I've ground that back a bit, but we're going to be going and um, sort of sealing in here anyway with like a stone chip. So it's not the end of the world. So what I'm going to do now is we'll chuck some uh, primer on there. Um, we'll then give all these extra bits a bit of a clean up ready for making this piece that's going to close this in. And then when we've got that in, we'll then make this top piece. So chuck some on that and then we'll move that bit on. Right, now that bit's in, we need to make this new piece to go on here to replace this piece here. So by the looks of where this sits, we've got a fold. So looking at it on plan, we've got a piece there this straight bit and then a fold the other way so we're creating like a z so what we will do now is work out what the piece of material we want is going to be so we'll pop that across there so we want 47 mil there This one is 15. Off of that in there. That piece is, say, 10. So we want a piece that's about 70 mil in the width by, we want to go a little bit oversized so we can cut it back. So if we say we'll go there to there. So we want a piece that's about 600. So 600 by 75. We'll go 80, 600 by 80, and then we will go, so let's go find a piece of steel, we'll cut a piece out, and we'll get a fold in it. So there's our cut piece that we need, just under 600 mil long, um, that we're gonna pop in here to fold. So the fold I wanna put on it first isn't this one, it's gonna be the opposing one. So what I'm gonna do is measure on the car what it wants to be, and we'll then transfer it onto steel, put that on first. So the opposing, the opposite one to that fold that should be sort of there, wants to be 10 mil. So we'll put a 10 mil one on first.
They're clamped down. Into the right place. Fold that. Fold that up. And this is where you test how good your bench is. Which this one isn't very good. Nearly there, I need to just knock that a bit. It's not bent the best in the middle, so. That's better. So we've got first angle on that. And it looks pretty nice. So. That one's on there now, we need to try and work the other one. Now the other one is quite critical. So, this is gonna be, take me a while to mark out, I think. So just been trying to fit and get this all in the right place. What I've found out is that, I've made this bit a slightly oversized. I want it to sit back on this piece here, not on this piece. So it tapers off towards the bottom. So up here we need to take five mil out of the piece we're making. So up here we need to take five mil out of this, the mark that I've put on, on it, um, down tapered down to zero down here for it to fit. So I'm gonna go and cut that now and then we'll be able to get it back to where it wants to go to then be able to find where this front curve wants to be. But it's not not far off, so let's go and tickle that bit off and then we'll try it back in. So that's that piece trimmed in. You can see we've notched it around this here, narrowed it off and then tapered it off down to the bottom. It's overhanging the bottom more than it needs to be. This is the line of where the sill repair comes into. We've got up to where we need to come up to as well for this piece to fold and roll down into. Um, so what we need to do now is we need to put mark this on for this next curve which isn't going to be the absolute easiest so the way I'm thinking I'm going to do it is going to be I think scratch it with this on the back So we've got two marks then. Let's fold it, see what happens. So that piece is folded and on and sitting in about the right place. Um, what I'm gonna do now is scratch down. body of the car like that, get some measurements, transfer them onto this, cut this and hopefully it fits. So after a few hours of fettling and messing around, here is the piece all bent into shape that goes in just there like that. Now I have been going over and checking on the other side of the car, I've got engineer square out check because we, along this the, this flat plane here and this flat plane here this panel was 90 degrees to it so I've taken the time to make sure um, that that is 90 degrees and I've also then been measuring off of this back edge here and this back edge here to this front face to check that it's the same dimension as the other side so it goes back in the right place and it is so now it's going to be um, 
clamp it all up and start tacking it in and then we can start. There's a few bits that still need a little fine fettling to get it to knock back, but it'll be easier when it's tacked in to do. So we'll get this all clamped in and then get the welder on and start putting some tacks on it. Actually, first things first, let's continue clean this all up again with the thing sound and make sure everything is that needs weld is clean back of the primer that was put on when the car was blasted um, and we'll clean this up as well and we'll give everything a coat of uh, weld through primer. I had a couple of comments on what it is that I'm using. It's just cheap and cheerful Halfords weld through primer. I hadn't ordered any, needed some, so ran up Halfords and grabbed some. Uh, seems to be working all right. You can weld through it as well, which I suppose is a bonus of it being called weld through primer. So let's do that. I probably won't film that because it's not very exciting, but we'll get that done. Um, and then I'll, you'll join me back when we start tacking it in. So that's everything, all in is uh, clean back and now in primer. This is all primed as well. So we'll get it clamped up and begin starting to tack it in again in the right place. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack this in. Then I've not got the wing for this side yet, the new one, but we're gonna clamp the old, put the old wing on possibly hang the door as well, um, just to check that lines and things look like they're still right. Like I say, I've measured this in every way that you can and checked it for square. And it is where the other one was, but I just want to chuck them a few bits on, make sure it's in the right place. that panel on tacked in place wing and door are now on so the door's sitting about where it wants to and we've got quite a nice gap for the wing now it ain't perfect obviously but this wing isn't going back on because well i don't really need to say why i do because it's <laughs> absolutely gone um but we've got it in the right place so i'm happy now to carry on welding that piece in um, and get that bit all dialed up and done what i'll then do i'm not going to do it straight away is we'll use these obviously if you can see those holes probably can't see them Probably can't see them, it's a bit dark, um, but we use those holes to drill through into the part we've just put on to then put the nut inserts into for us then to bolt it all through. And then we'll continue up here, putting this all back together. So if I whip, ow, this wing off, I can show you what I've done. So again, it ain't, it ain't the neatest welding, but we've just come down and tacked on the outside and then we've started tacking it up on the inside. Now, this bit's a problem because obviously in this, where these two panels, original panels join, we've got seam sealer. So welding them, I'm still trying to get to grips with what to do that with that, but we're getting there, we're getting there with it. It will, it, it will work. Um, so we're gonna get this all fully welded in now, get it dressed, and then we'll move on to this top bit and putting this back together, fabricating then this piece, piecing this all in. Hopefully getting this corner dialed up. I can't see it being done today, but hopefully tomorrow that bit will be done. So that's that piece mounted in. Um, the, the cleaning up wasn't the best because I had to do it with the bear and I don't really want to go working it too much. It isn't seen when all this lot goes back on. So I'd rather leave it a little bit rough like that. We're going to prime it now to get rid of, um, to cover up obviously the bare metal. Um, but it's looking pretty darn good with everything the way it should do. Um, and then we're going to now move on to putting this piece of this lip back on. Chucks a bit of primer on this area. Um, that's all gone off now. I've just obviously held this piece on with this magnet and it's sort of balanced there. It's enough for me to get a couple of tacks in to get it in the right place. Um, so I'm going to now weld this piece in and then I made this piece at the weekend but it appears to have disappeared. So I've got to remake this bit but looking at it we might make all of this piece as one piece because um, there's holes and things in here we'll create this bit again. Um, just to finish this off, it only goes, that's as far as the rock goes, the rest of it's pretty solid. That's that tacked in place then, again, old pigeon's been welding it, but it's on, it's strong. Um, so I'm gonna grind them all back now, um, and then we will move on to trying to make this new piece, well, cutting this out and remaking this new piece here. 
and there it is welded in um, cooled down so we're going to now dress this um, and get this all sorted out uh, welds some of them are all right but yeah some of them are not the best but it's in it's on it's solid nice and solid so let's get these dressed knock this down make this little piece and put that on and then i think we can pretty much call that little bit and that post nearly done and there is that bit all sorted out and new and no more rust now we've got to drill that hole there obviously for the top wing mount um we've even put this little piece on it looks like it's made it folded back over I'll show you the other side we've got this little piece here it's obviously folded over and it's welded too now mine hasn't got these angles and folds on but it's made to that internal shape so while the those bends do add, add strength to it this is pretty pretty strong um, and i don't think it will be a massive problem that it's not got those folds in so chuck some primer on that now and then we can call that area or that piece done then and there we go finished to a point so we've replaced this all the way along here and up we've replaced a patch in here there's a patch behind this and then obviously we've replaced all of this corner as well um i have still got bits to do but for all intensive purposes it's done so i'm happy with how it looks i think it's pretty pretty good um considering how bad it was we obviously put this little bit back on to try and make it look as factory as possible need to sort this out but We'll, we'll get around to that. I've got to sort all these window openings holes as well, which we'll get round to at some point. So I think we'll leave that episode there, guys. We're getting there. We are getting there. I'm so happy with how all the welding things are going. I think I feel I'm I'm really starting to get to grips with it. Um, there have been a few of you guys um, who have commented and suggested things where I've been welding and thought, yeah, that's fine. That's working. It's doing what it does. A couple of you guys have said, try this, try that, try the other. And it's, thank you all so much. I can't remember exactly who you were in the comments, but it has made a difference making a few alterations that you guys have suggested. So if you see anything I'm not quite doing right, do please say, well, try this, it might make it easier. But I think for my level of um, experience, I suppose, in fabrication and welding, we're not doing bad. We're not doing too bad. We're getting to a point of where I'm happy with the bits I've done. The front panel, obviously, I wasn't happy with, but the amount of lessons, I suppose, that I learned from just those panels was well worth spending the time doing them. This, I'm super happy with. Still a few bits to finish, but we shall get there. So I want to say a massive thank you to Heritage Park Centre for sponsoring the series. I got asked to do an interview with them um, last week as well. Um, if you've not seen that, I'll try and put a link in the description to it on their Facebook page or their Instagram page. I'm not sure which one. If not, go and hit Heritage Park Centre up at Drive Heritage on Instagram um, and it'll be on their feed. Um, really good fun, really good fun. Went, went down really well. Um, so if you've not watched it, do go and give that uh, a watch if you want to know a bit more about me and where everything has come from with the channel and the car. Don't forget guys, if you visit heritageparkcentre.com using the code CHAMBERS at the checkout, we'll get you 10% off your order. Massive thank you to the guys for giving me to give to you guys that code um, as just a little bit of a thank you um, to help you along with your project. I'd also like to say a massive thank you to Sealy Tools for the help with um, some of the tools that I've been using on the restoration of this car. I will put a link in the description to all the tools I've used in this episode. So if you are after anything, go and have a look and give yourself a little bit of a treat. As ever guys, thank you all so much for watching. I do really, really appreciate it. If you're watching this and you're not subscribed, do please consider clicking the subscribe button. It really does help with um, growing the channel and getting us out there. We are chasing 20,000 subscribers as well by Christmas. Hopefully, now we've gone back into lockdown, more of you guys are going to be watching the videos again and we're going to have another peak again, um, which, which would be nice. Um, do please like the videos and do all please continue to comment on the videos again. It all helps with the YouTube's algorithm as getting us out there onto the recommended page of people that haven't seen us already. So we'll leave that on there then, guys. Thank you all ever so much for watching. Until next time, enjoy. <laughs>